Welcome back to What's Next Garage. Today we're building out this EJ25 motor. We got the rotating assembly done and ready to go. Now we're gonna build it up, get this thing back on the road. Stick around, here we go. So because this motor took a hit here, because this was all broke, so it got into a front end collision, I think there is a little bit of distortion in the threads down here because when I threaded this, when I cleaned this hole, it got a little tight down there. So I'm gonna try and take, this as a M12 by 1.25, and I'm going to try and First, let's get it started in there. So I'm hitting the tight spot right there. So I'm just gonna ease through it. It could have been distortion from maybe the, um, the welding here. And I may pull this pin out of there. Or uh, that locating bushing. Yeah, we're, we're actually taking a cut it's just cleaning through those threads. But that will then give me a, an accurate torque reading through there. So we can see a little bit of debris, but we'll blow all that out. We did make a few marks on this when we were turning it up. So I'm just gonna flip it over, drive it down, and it'll have better holding power. Over this, we have our gasket right here. We're using the uh, Felpro 26415PT, and these are MLS, multi-layer steel gaskets, not the OEM ones. I always put these in. That side up. Okay. Thing in. Oh, like a glove. Okay, now we can do it. Now it's time to torque. We're gonna go right to number six, which is 7.4 foot pounds in alphabetical order. Seven point, that's barely any. I'm going 10. Like this thing doesn't go to 7.4. I'm going 10. Foot pounds. Oh, we got 44. Okay, now, tighten all the bolts, 90 degrees. And an F. Okay. Oh. Okay, now, now, tighten bolts A and B another 45 degrees. A and B go one more 45er. Okay. Done. I got it. If I'm going to continue to do these, oh, that one balls on you, Titan. Oh, that one hurt my calf. <laughs> got her. Got her. That's it. We're all tight. So. Um, put the insert in, 
made a bushing, locating pin, everything's torqued. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm really, I'm really pretty satisfied with it. Now this baby is ready to be built. So we gotta replace this part right here. Okay, so those are all oil passages. But that's definitely bent and then this is broke off. And then let's get this guy off of there. Let's use a Crescent wrench. There we go. We did salvage this pressure switch off of the old motor. We'll just reuse it. So now we can look at getting the oil pump cleaned up and get it on there. Let's get the oil pump in here. We're going to scrape off all the Permatex. Clean that up. We got a new one of these seals, so we'll knock this seal out and we'll put a new seal in and look at all that yuck I got going on Let's here. Let's get a screwdriver in there, that'll probably work a little bit better. There we go. And then you see that little hole or that little groove in there? That's actually a little drain to drain back to the system. So we're going to just run this guy in there. Should. Yeah, he wants to push in there, so that's good. So you can actually push him in or start him with your thumbs. And I'm going to just... And I'm actually pretty comfortable doing that because I was able to put it in with my thumbs. Good. Yep, I'm happy with that. That's good. So before we put it on, we'll make sure and grease the lips of the seal. I already have the engine block prepped. I'm just gonna get the RTV and get ready. For those of you out there that are wondering, this is the best purchase I ever made. They're part number 22069. It's a Permatex part number, and it's just these nozzles. So I haven't used this black Permatex in a while, and if I'd have left the nozzle on, it'd be junk. So you could buy these replacement nozzles and they're awesome. Okay, we're gonna give this a final clean. Let's get any oils off of there. Okay. So this o ring is gonna go right here. Oops, get in there. I may put a little grease on there just to make sure, but seems good. So I took what I could get. Yes, I took what I could get, and then she and then she looked at me with them big brown eyes and said, You ain't seen nothing yet. Meow, meow. Oh, baby, you just ain't seen no, 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 nothing yet. Wish I could sing. Okay, here we go. Now we're gonna, we're gonna go up and we're gonna seal. And I believe they had gasket material around there too. Put a little grease on there. Let's get a little bit more here. The fit is very, very good. So I don't need to put a huge bead on there like I have in the past on So we gotta stuff. get that oil pump. Flats are kind of like that. Let's just go in and see if we can hook it. Okay. There, there it is, there it is, there it is. There we go, there we go. Now we're good. There we go. Okay. Then we'll get the torque figured out on that. Okay, we're gonna go with 108 foot-pounds. Okay. 
Yep, we got them all. Perfect. All right, it's the 2nd of July. We've got ourselves a long weekend here. I'm gonna try and get this EJ253 built and in the car by Tuesday, which would be the 5th of July. So I'm gonna pull this assembly off, replace this end cap, and replace the camshaft seal, and then we'll put it all back on. It'd be silly not to do it. So it had to be a pin that was holding that up. Something's holding this, what's holding this? That is, okay. All right, we got that. That was really stubborn. Very unhappy with that. But it came off. And we're replacing that cap and the seal. So for this back cap, I'm gonna take some aviation permatex. Oh boy, that's messy. We're just gonna go around it just to help seal up any imperfections in the OD. There we go. Uh, I knew it was gonna fall. I don't know why I decided to just play dumb with it. This fits on there really good. So this is an inch and a quarter. It fits right over the shaft for the crank or cam. All right, that's how I did the end cap. Subaru motors are so awesome, but this is part of the valve, uh, the valve hydraulics. And that screw right there, that bolt hole, you can't get in there because of that. I mean, Subaru has very few difficult areas or let's say poor engineered parts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this hole, I'm gonna plug that hole, I've already got those holes plugged. Then I'm gonna go in there and I'm just gonna grind off a little bit on here to get clearance to get a bolt in there but i have to tape that off first and i got that right here all right i'm going to just go in here and start taking this away okay beautiful and you might think there's not enough meat there but this bracket 
is all the way. This is a big bracket for this sensor. Perfect. And that's it. That's nice. Now we got clearance there. And if you look at the bracket I ground on, you can see it's really a pretty beefy bracket. So we're good to go. All right, we got to replace the throttle body. This coolant line was damaged. So I have another throttle body, but we'll just swap that out quick. The last thing that has to be fixed is the stud when they took it out at the boneyard. They probably pulled, you know, they pulled a little hard and bent this. So I'm just going to put a pipe on here and try and bend this back without putting any heat on it. I don't want to break that mount because I could just see that casting blowing out right there. Well, whatever happens, you're all going to come along for the ride. Holy cow, doesn't take much to put, give it that a bend. Yeah, nothing really. So, now it needs to go up. And not much, so this isn't bad at all. Oh yeah, a little bit more, and it'll be okay. Famous last words, just a little more. That's perfect. Wow. That's perfect to this face. Nice and square to that face. Good stuff. Now I'm just gonna fit the plenum on here. Or yeah, I'm gonna fit the plenum and then make sure that everything is right. Then I'm gonna take the plenum back off and install the motor without the plenum on. Okay, we got the motor all ready to go. Timing is in, we're waiting for one plastic part here. I've gone through, I've set the intake on, got the guards on for the ejector wires. That's all over here. This is ready to go. Now I have to head outside in the 100 degree heat and get that car in here do the throw out bearing and then some other odds and ends before we put this in. We'll have to inspect that really good to make sure there's no cracks on it. So I'm gonna use some dye makers grease. My good buddy Tim, he probably remembers this stuff. It's waterproof, extreme pressure, rust inhibitor, withstands high temp. It is my kid's car, so I imagine this stuff will all get pretty hot. Forms a persistent film. Persistence. You gotta be persistent. Put a little there. Just put a dab in there. Put a little bit there. 
and we'll install the spring which retains on that ball goes in okay and okay so then that spring goes in there and then when you put that ball in there this kind of opens up and accepts it in there okay so these bearings then one leg goes in the hole like so and then you just got to kind of pull that over there and that's all that retains it it's nothing spectacular at all just gonna put this guy in there like so and just get him in there like that that's it so that's good all done pretty easy assembly now I'm just gonna get the pressure plate or the flywheel on the pressure plate on the motor side and get this thing ready for install tomorrow. We have one dowel pin on the bell housing. The other dowel pin is here. But if you look on the motor, it's missing. So we're gonna take it out of this black half. We're just gonna pull this dowel pin out. This is the block that has the cracked ring land. So it's scrap anyway. We'll do everything we can to get that out of there. See if she starts. I'm not, I'm not worried about it because I know it's going to start. Hold on a sec. Um, it might also have just more voltage there too when you got out of the jump pad. Yeah, the correct voltage, yeah. Right, hold on a sec, let's go to... Alright, give her a shot. Here you go. Oh yeah, no kidding, it's right over. So it had to be voltage. Dude, it started right up. And I look beautiful. Wow. Uh, coolant. Uh, coolant's coming out on top of the radiator. And we've already ran it through a heat cycle, so the only thing I can think of is maybe it's just a coolant sensor. Oh, and out? Yeah. Maybe there was some air in there. All right, that's good. Now it yeah, she sounds like a sewing machine.
All right, back her out. <laughs> 